الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفر ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله قال الله تبارك وتعالى فرددناه إلى أمه كي تقر عينها ولا تحزن ولتعلم أن وعد الله حق ولكن أكثرهم لا يعلمون وقال تبارك وتعالى إنما النجوى من الشيطان ليحزن الذين آمنوا وليس بضارهم شيئا إلا بإذن الله وعلى الله فليتوكل المؤمنون وقال النبي صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم أكثر من قول لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله فإنها كنز من كنوز الجنة أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام My dear respected brothers, elders and sisters It is a pleasure to be here for the first time in this city and in this beautiful masjid seeing all these beautiful faces on the best day on the day of Jumu'ah It is a pleasure indeed Dear respected brothers and sisters I had a concern with me today about a topic which is very taboo in the community which many people overlook Many addictions are, are usually looked at from the outside, not seeing that it is actually an inner problem and it is just to cope and is to numb out the actual issue. And so the topic today, which is usually in our communities taboo, is that of depression. And that that is something that people don't really like to talk about too often. Today, the khutbah, in, my intention is basically just to raise awareness and to give some tips. Um, I myself am not a professional, yet I am a student of mental illness. Um, however, again, it's not going to be any treatment here, but there's going to be perspectives from an Islamic point of view. And inshallah, just to uh, shed some light on that, inshallah. Statistics show that 16 million people have at least one major uh, depressive episode 
One in every 15 people, they suffer from it regularly. Roughly around one in every 15 people. And again, this is common and happening in our communities, in our families. A lot of times people are overlooked. They are not, uh, you know, the attention is not sought and people don't seem to uh, really think that such and such person in the family, even though he might be showing signs, really needs to get any help. And that's when problems begin because if these things are not looked at properly and they progress, then there's some major problems that happen and we are seeing it in the ummah, we are seeing it in our masajid, in our communities. Last year, actually this is last July of this year, a man on Danforth Street, which is in Toronto, where I studied as well, Danforth Street, full of Muslims, Muslim store, I mean, it's, uh, halal stores everywhere. You can see Muslims from blocks. This young man, after Maghrib Salah, happened to walk down the block on this street, injured about 12 people, killed two people, and at the end, unfortunately, his life was ended as well. When we look at it, and when you see the witnesses and you see the people discuss his situation, everybody said, nicest man, always used to smile, that's all we ever seen of him. But the problem is, just because a person can smile, doesn't mean that everything is okay. And unfortunately, the family also knew that there was issues that he had that were not uh, you know, looked at. There was no concern for that. There, there must have been concern, but there was no treatment that was sought. That is what I'm trying to say. The treatment was not sought, and unfortunately, it continued to progress, and it went to a state where it was devastation. Another example, it must have been two years from now, you see in, in, the, in, in Mecca, right next to the Kaaba on the Hatim, a man is standing on the Hatim and he's swinging his, you know, one of the lamps. And people are watching this and thinking that this could not be a person who's in the right state of mind. That there's something that is wrong, of course. And so, another example here is that in the Corona Masjid where I'm from, in that community alone, four to five cases of suicide in the last two years. Youngsters, the youth. And there was one, uh, you know, adult as well, young man. These kind of situations lead us to ask the question that what could have been the problem and how did it get to this point? Right? And so many people don't look at uh, the situation from the right lens. How do people see depression? Some say it's a spiritual problem. A lot of people will basically diagnose it and say it's, this is just because of a spiritual reason. And there are countless examples of scholars, of imams, who are dismissive in their public statements about this issue. And the, the, the common theme will be that if you believe in Allah, if you have iman, then you shouldn't have depression. If you believe in Allah, then you don't need a psychiatrist, a therapist, a counselor. And this is wrong. The Qur'an does not stop us. It does not tell us not to seek help from those who... Ha it tells us to go to those who are professional, who, are, who, who can help us. The Qur'an does not stop us from getting professional help, from going to these people who are skilled in their, in their training, in their knowledge, and in their field. And it is part of a believer's duty to seek help when he needs the help. And Allah has made these means of our treatment. Of, of, uh, in these situations. Another common thing that we hear is that if you don't find peace and if you're not happy, that means your iman is at fault. Your faith is weak. People can have faith. People can have Islam and they can have this issue as well. That is not the case. The people I'm talking about that did this in our masjid that have gone through and, and the, the, you know, some of the children that had committed suicide, these are people that came to the masjid. There was masjid goers, these are people who prayed salah, who had iman. But these are situations that not everyone has the same situation. And you cannot be dismissive about professional help. 
We cannot do that. The worst thing you can say to these people is that it is your fault. It is you that have the less of such and such thing. You are the problem. This is the worst thing you can tell the person. To make the situation many times worse. So then what to do? What to do? First thing is that there is no one way solution to this problem. There are many, many ways of looking at the solution. I have in my family professionals in this uh, regard. I myself am an imam of the masjid there in Corona. And the imams in the last two, three years, we have gone through many different mental health trainings and seminars. That does not make us professional, but it definitely caused an awareness. It definitely made us understand that this is a serious situation that cannot be ignored. It cannot be left alone. Some people will need medical treatment, definitely. Some will need counseling, a therapist. Some might need a psychologist and some might need you know, a, a psychiatrist. But people according to their circumstances and their situation need to be given that help. That's the least that someone can do, especially if you are family. It all depends on the situation and the person's circumstance. But there are ways that we can spot these signs. And if we ignore the signs, then respected brothers and sisters, it leads to catastrophe. It leads to many, many problems. And we want to avoid those situations. In this day and age that we have today, many factors could be the reason. It could be the environment. It could be what we're watching. It could be anything. But the, the problem is that once we spot that there is an issue, then that should be, we, we should uh, try to get the person help. And not really try to counsel them ourselves. Many people take it into their own hands and say, this is nothing. We'll counsel you. We'll tell you what the real problem is. I know the cure. And like this, there's continuous, uh, you know, people who will, and those kind of people make the situation worse. If you are not professional in it, and you don't know what you're saying, remember, instead of trying to help, you could make the situation worse. So really, really, it, it, it is an important issue. And again, I'm not here to diagnose anything or treat anything, just an awareness. And so that we can be reminded that there are many ways to cope with it. Also, the Islamic perspective. Remember, we cannot dismiss either or. The Islamic perspective is there and that their religion has been a means of many people coping and getting relief through this. It is not the only, and neither should it be looked at as. However, if we, this is one of the ways to help people to cope with it, generally speaking. The Quranic perspective is that number one, part of being a human being, to go through sadness, to feel that, to feel stress, anxiety, this is all of being a human. And this is all but normal. However, the problem happens when this state, it continues for long. When there's an overwhelming state of any of these situations that leads a person so far into it that it prevents a person from doing anything. And sadness, it prevents one from doing actions. Grief and overwhelming anxiety, it prevents a person from doing anything productive. It stops a person from going further. It literally stops a person. And the heart benefits nothing through grief. Really, there's no benefit from it. And so this is one of the reasons why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to make the dua, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al wal huzn. That, oh Allah, we, I ask your protection from grief and from anxiety both. Because they are both destructive. Grief is the sadness you are feeling, or over the past especially. And anxiety is the fear of the future, and the fear that something could happen, and something bad is going to happen. And so this state, they're both destructive, and they're not good for the human being, they are not good for the soul. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's protection from it, we ask Allah to protect us all from it. I mean, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He speaks to the... To the best of all mankind and the best human beings, the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He addresses them in the Quran. And when we see some of these situations, we see that the prophets of Allah also went through some difficulty. They went through a lot of pain, anguish. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the Prophet of Allah, 
to his Prophet Sallallahu he says, لَعَلَّكَ بَاخِعُ النَّفْسَكَ That it is perhaps that you may even die in anguish because of the people not believing. Like is it such that he went through so much grief and anguish at the, his people who did not believe, who would not take the risala and the message, that it was he went through so much pain and anguish to that as if he was going to die. That is how much pain he went through. When he heard of one of his children passing away, he had to sit down. The Prophet ﷺ, the strongest of men, had to sit down and had to gather himself. That how heavy, how heavy his heart felt. And that is, it is reality. The pain could be there. We go through tough times. We hear about Maryam alayhi salam who went through such a difficult situation. It caused her so much grief that in the words of the Quran she says that Ya laytani mittu qabla hadha wa kuntu nasiyam mansiya That oh I wish that I would, be, would have been dead before this. Then to face this situation. And in the extreme grief and extreme anxiety it happened to the best of these people. Then they were the ones with the strongest of iman. So they went through this, but again, they didn't lose their hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they, they stood firm and they, uh, they hoped for reward in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You see, when there's a situation that's not in our control, then that is considered a mushaqqa, it's considered a hardship. And any hardship a believer goes through with the reward that Allah will reward, with the hope that Allah will reward him if he or she goes through this with patience, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there for them to reward them and to make their hearts firm. And Allah does not test anyone more than they're able to take. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not put on us more than we are able to take. And so these are just examples. But look at how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responded to them. So the number one thing is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not criticize or make them feel guilty about having this feeling because we all go through that feeling. And so if Allah did not criticize them, if Allah did not make them feel guilty, how can we make someone feel guilty if they're going through this? If they're going through any form of depression or any type of mental illness to make them think that, hey, you shouldn't be like this. You are like this because you did this. Or because you and uh, so and so and making them feel at fault and guilty. Rather Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comforted them. He gave them hope. And this is what we need to do. We need to give people hope and comfort them. And, and help them and take them to those who can really guide them and help them. The other thing is that having temporary sadness and grief. And any of these feelings, as long as it's temporary, as long as it's not for long, once again, it is all but normal. But for it to continue, for it to progress to a situation where the person is, it, it's killing the person inside and out. It's taken over, the thoughts have taken over that this person cannot think straight. And we'll get to some of these signs that what are the symptoms really? When you see that, then really we need to get help for this person. We should seek help ourselves as well if we need. Before we get to the signs, some of these things that, that can help us to cope. So the first thing was that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comforted and consoled them. The second thing is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's knowledge of what we're doing. That Allah knows what we're going through. When we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching and He knows our every move, He knows our inner secrets and every pain and how much we're going through and Allah knows this, then understand Allah is with us and He will not leave us. This is a means of great consult and comfort. When Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala was with the Prophet sallallahu in the cave and the Prophet alayhi salam said, إِذْ يَقُولُ لِصَاحِبِهِ لَا تَحْزَن Do not worry, do not be sad. إِنَّ اللَّهَ مَعْنَا Allah is with us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with us. And how could Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala leave anyone? How could Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala want bad for anyone? So to know that. And the, the, other, the third point is that any type of pain and suffering it is part of this world. There is no one in this world that does not go through any pain or suffering. Every single person has gone through and will go through something of some stage, whether more or less. 
Every single person will go through that. And every, even the fact that every child comes into this world and he's, the child is crying. It does not come just like that. It cries as it, as it comes into the world. This is a sign for us that this world is a test. A poet, one of, one of the sheikhs said very beautifully, he said, when you, come into the, you came into this world, you were crying and when the people saw you, they were smiling and laughing and they were happy to see you. Live such a beautiful and productive life that when you are leaving this world, you are smiling and happy to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the people are sad and grieved at your departure. Subhanallah. Lead such a beautiful life. So these are all tests. Everything that we see around us, the calamities that are happening on and off, the fires and, and anything that we see around us, these are things to remind us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in control and that everyone will be tested. And my respected brothers and sisters, we have to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy, that Allah is the most merciful and that Allah cares and loves for every one of His servants. No matter how, you know, how disobedient a servant might become, he is still the servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah says, لَا تَقْتُلُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ بِكُمْ رَحِيمًا That do not take your own life. Allah is with you very merciful. Allah has given us this life. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us this as an amana, as a gift. So do not abuse this gift. Do not take your own life. Do not hurt yourself. Do not do anything that can do any harm to this amana, this beautiful uh, yani amana that Allah has given us. It has to go back to Him. Dear brothers and sisters, before I conclude with a few more uh, yani tips from the Qur'an and from our deen, I want to mention some of these signs. If you see any of these signs, to spot them and to get help for the family member. Some of them are very common. There's overwhelming sadness. There's low energy, loss of appetite, or too much of an appetite, lack of interest in things, feeling guilty about life in itself, blaming yourself or blaming the world. To feel useless, to feel worthless. Those kind of thoughts, they're not healthy. To say that this world is a much better place without me and people don't need me. No, the world needs us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made this place for us and that we can make this world beautiful if we strive hard to make it a better place. And then things like selling valuable things, constantly thinking of death in a very unhealthy and negative manner. The positive manner of thinking of death is, you know what, life is short. Let us make the best out of this life. Let's live a productive life. Let's do the best that we can. It is only a short life. That is a positive way. The negative way is that I want to die. I want to hurt myself. And I, all of those thoughts which are not good. And if any of these signs are there, and there might be a few more or less, but we should try our best not to ignore this. Parents especially, do not ignore this. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sake. But this could be very, very serious. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the true understanding of this. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our youth, protect our families from this disease, from depression, from sadness, and anything like this. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and may Allah guide us. I mean, aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa lisa'i lil muslimina fastaghfiru innahu hu al ghafur al rahim. الحمد لله الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده قال الله تبارك وتعالى إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وبارك على محمد وأزواجه وذريته وأصحابه أبو بكر عمر عثمان وعلي رضي الله عنهم أجمعين my dear respected brothers and sisters as I conclude with the khutbah and the last few points once again, I wanted to remind that these uh, Islamic perspectives are an Islamic point of view. And yes, they have many benefits. However, this is not the only cure as many people again are dismissive. That if you have faith in Iman, then you shouldn't have this problem. You shouldn't need a therapist or a psychiatrist. And this is totally wrong, totally against the teachings of our deen. That we do need to seek if we need the help. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made these people a means of a cure. 
and that we need to go to the people if there is need. But at the same time, from the Islamic perspectives, all of these things that we have been taught are there to make us firm and to help us cope with the situation and to move forward. This should also not be dismissed. The belief in the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that nothing can happen without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's will is one of the best Quranic remedies that we can find. That whatever was not meant for us, right, it, 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 is, it is never going to come to us. And what came to us, it was never supposed to miss us in the first place. Everyone will get what they are meant to get. And if things are not in our control, understand Allah is the one who is in control. And so we use Qadr to console about the past and not to justify the future. Right? Don't get, don't get all worried up about what wasn't yours in the first place. So this should be a means of consoling. That Allah knows what is happening. He is the most wise. He is the one with all wisdom. Second thing is the contentment. To be content. And this is one of the formulas of being happy. The Prophet ﷺ said that always look at those when it comes to materialistic things in the dunya, look at those who have less than you. Look at those who have hardly anything, much less than you. As long as you're looking at those people, you will feel contentment in your heart. You will feel happiness. It will be a means of peace in your heart. And you will never uh, be ungrateful. In fact, when you look at those who have less than you, automatically shukr and the, that, that quality of gratefulness comes inside the heart. Which is one of the healthiest of emotions a person can go through. However, if you look at those who have more than you, and continue to look at them, then you'll always feel regret. You'll always feel that you don't have much. And then on the other side, when it comes to spirituality, when it comes to our deen, always look at those who are above us, ahead of us, those who have better character than us, those who are, have more knowledge than us, who are better Muslims. Let's continue to look at those so we can continue to progress. We can continue to want to move forward and want to you know, yani excel in our deen. Unfortunately, most people, they look at those who are below them. They always compare with those who have less knowledge than them. Hey, at least I know the last 10 surahs. I know somebody who doesn't even know one surah. At least I come for the khutbah. So and so doesn't even come. As long as those thoughts are there, a person will never want to do any actions. A person will never want to move forward. He will be content. And that is a scary thing to be. To be content in our deen is very dangerous. To be content with the dunya, alhamdulillah, it is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another thing, respected brothers and sisters, is that sometimes it doesn't have to be psychological. It doesn't have to be mental. It could be just a tactic and a trick of the shaitan that he likes to play on the believers so that they can be sad, so they, they can stop doing good actions, so they can stop progressing. It could be from shaitan as Allah says, إِنَّمَا النَّجْوَىٰ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ لِيَحْزُنَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا To make the believers sad and to make them turn away from Allah and from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Muslims should channel their grief through the worship of Allah. Through the salah, as the Prophet ﷺ said, I find peace in my heart through the salah. And that dua is one of the most powerful tools that we can have to continuously seek help and make dua. Make dua to Allah that He opens the doors for us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the ability to get the correct help. The final thing I want to say is one of the dhikrs, one of the means of remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the Prophet ﷺ taught us. As I mentioned in the beginning of the khutbah, the hadith, where the, the Prophet ﷺ told the Sahaba, shall I, shall I not tell you of the words that are from the treasures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's arsh? Shall I not tell you these words? They said, do tell us, O Prophet of Allah. He said, la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Say it in abundance, that there is no power and there is no might except with Allah. That no one can stop, no one can do anything and benefit or harm us except from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And no one can give us the strength to do any good except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, whoever says this in abundance, whoever says this in abundance, the hadith of Abu Huraira, that there are 99 cures for this dhikr, 99 cures, the least of which 
is anxiety and stress, the least of which. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us strength. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us happiness. We ask those who are suffering from depression, Ya Allah, to cure them. Ya Allah, to remove their depression and their sadness and their grief. Ya Allah, strengthen us in our faith. And Ya Allah, for those who are suffering from any type of mental illness, Ya Allah, remove this uh, illness from this. Ya Allah, cure our those in our ummah who are sick. Ya Allah, grant them shifa. Those who have passed on, Ya Allah, have mercy on them and grant them the highest stages of paradise. Amin Ya Rabbil Alameen. Allahumma ghfir lana wa lil mu'minina wal mu'minat wal muslimina wal muslimat al ahya'i minhum wal amwat innaka sami'un qareebu mujibu da'awat Allahumma alif bayna qulubina wa aslih that bayna wa ahdina subul as-salam wa jannibna al-fawahisha ma zahra minha wa ma batan Allahumma inna na'udhu bika min al-hammi wal huzn wa na'udhu bika min al-ajzi wal kasl wa na'udhu bika min ghalbati al-dayni wa qahri al-rijal Amin ya Rabbil Alameen Ibad Allah rahimakum Allah inna Allah ya'mur bil adli wal ihsan wa ita idhi al-qurba wa yanha an al-fahshai wal munkari wal baghi ya'idhukum la'allakum tadhakkaroon aqim as-salah Allah Akbar Allah Akbar Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah Ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح غير قامة الصلاة قد قامة الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله Stohu, stohu, staqim, wa'atadu, straighten your own, fill the gaps. Allahu Akbar. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Maliki Yawm Ad-Din. Iyaka Na'budu wa Iyaka Nasta'een. اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين والضحى والليل إذا سجى ما ودعك ربك وما قلى وللآخرة خير لك من الأولى ولسوف يعطيك ربك فترضى ألم يجدك يتيما فآوى ووجدك ضالا فهدى ووجدك عائلا فأغنى فأما اليتيم فلا تقهر وأما السائل فلا تنهر وأما بنعمة ربك فحدث الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين القارعة ما القارعة 
وما أدراك ما القارعة يوم يكون الناس كالفراش المبثوث وتكون الجبال كالعهن المنفوش فأما من ثقلت موازينه فهو في عيشة راضية وأما من خفت موازينه فأمه هاوية وما أدراك ما هي نار حامية الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So just a few quick announcements. Um, so tonight's lecture and youth program are canceled, so there won't be a lecture tonight. And Helping Hand invites you to its annual fundraising gala benefiting Syrian refugees Saturday, Saturday December 1st at Royal Banquet Hall on Miramar Road at 6.30 p.m. That's Saturday, December 1st at 6.30 p.m. The Latina Muslim Foundation invites you to its fundraising dinner on Saturday, December 8th uh, here at the ICSD Multipurpose Room starting at 6 p.m. Uh, the Muslimat and Nisa Shelter is having a table next to the library seeking support. Please stop by the table and help. And just a reminder, there's no parking at the Lindbergh School across the street. Please cooperate with the security guards and the volunteers. Also, do your best to leave the parking lot so others who, came, who come for the next prayer will find spaces available. And we have a few requests for dua. Please keep everybody in the community in your duas. And the Indian American Muslim Council is hosting its annual fundraising dinner Sunday, December 2nd at 5.30 p.m. here at Sufi Mediterranean Cuisine down the street. Jazakallah and all right, we'll pray Salat al Asr in a few minutes, inshallah.
Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Ashhadu an la ilaha